Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and that was solo number three from Chet Dobo's Funk Drumming Workbook. So this is part three of a series on funk drumming I'm doing. This is a really fun solo. It's not difficult. There are a few little things, though, we need to talk about, and then I'll play it in some different styles and at some different speeds for you. That tempo was quarter note equals 108, and the metronome was on sixteenths. I do that so I can play a little more evenly and hear myself with that click that's important to subdivide. You can also play this solo with a bounce feel, which we'll talk about in a minute. In that case, you wouldn't have the 16th sound. The trickiest thing about this solo are the hi-hat rhythms. So you have this rhythm in the beginning that goes like this. So that rhythm is changing up. Now you see I'm playing that with a really loose wrist and I'm using my fingers. I'm not playing tight like this. You do not want to do that. So it's very, very light. A good way to practice that would be to do both those rhythms separately. So in other words, we would do this rhythm first. And then we would do this rhythm next. All right, and then you put them together. Now you can also use rim shots uh, if you want to play this. So that would sound like this. Gives it a little bit more ring there, so that's totally fine. The second part of this solo is the most difficult part because you have these hi-hat openings and you should take those literally. So the first one is short and the one that goes into the next bar is long like this. So uh, you'll also notice in that first bar of the third line, the accent on the snare drum is on the second beat, like this. So the way you want to do that is with a clinch. So you're dropping the first note, and then you're accenting the second note with your fingers. And there you also saw me playing some rim shots. So that's pretty much it. The rest of the solos basically are pretty simple. You can use two cymbals instead of one for the crashes. Uh, that's fine. I used mostly this 16 here. Uh, and then just be careful on that last part of the solo, which is three lines from the end. That's pretty funky there. Just make sure you're playing the notes as written. I'll play that for you. One, two, three, four. So just watch your accents there. It's very important. So now let's do this with a more of a bouncy feel. We'll take just a little edge off the click and go to 106. And we're going to play it with sort of a triplety feel like jazz. So let me give you an example. I'll play some jazz time and then some funk time. One, two.
right, so you see the feel there, how it transfers over? So we'll play the whole solo with that feel. One, two, three. I'm adding a few open hi-hats here and there. That's okay to do that. After you learn the solo exactly as written, like I played the first time, then you can start adding stuff. That's totally okay to do that. Finally, we're going to play the solo quick. So this takes a lot of technique to do this. We're going to go pretty quick at uh, quarter note equals 120, which is 12 clicks over the written tempo. So here you have to play the hi-hat nice and light so you don't get you know tied up here. It's, it's pretty complicated. One, two, three. So that's uh, lots of fun to play fast. You can go faster, but that's a real good musical kind of tower power, James Brown tempo there. So hope you enjoyed this solo three. We'll be back soon with solo number four.